Zach says, hey, hey Robbie, Zach. I want to build my first com computer, okay. and I was wondering if you have any suggestions or tips for hardware. Uh, I was wanting to use it for some gaming and a lot of multitasking. I also just want it to be fast all around. I was thinking a quad-core processor, Thermaltake power supply, and a nice NVIDIA graphics card. I'm going to have it to be a dual boot with Windows XP or 7 if it is better, okay. and Linux Ubuntu. I also want it to be upgradable. Uh, um, I was looking around 800 to 1,000 US dollars in the end, but I can add parts over time to get my final point. Uh, also, I really, I don't really know what to look for in a motherboard. So if you could tell me what specs to look for, okay, I'd appreciate it. Sure. Yeah, I'll do my so best, Zach. Right? Zach. Let me just pull up that email so that you can move on to other stuff, Carrie. Okay. Uh, okay. So first of all, Zach. Thank you kindly for being so thorough with your email. Um, and this is a good example uh, for everybody of how you should send a question because Zach has really laid out for me what it is that he wants to do with the computer and how, and how uh, he wants to proceed, his budget, things like that. That really helps me to be able to give you advice uh, with regards to your purchasing decisions. Um, so just looking over this, Zach, uh, you want to do some gaming. You want to do multitasking, which is inevitable. I mean, you're going to be using a uh, multitasking operating system these days regardless. Um, you want it to be fast. And you're thinking about going with a quad core, which is definitely a good idea. I would say when you're looking at the processor, uh, between dual core and quad core, uh, and I tend to lean towards Intel, uh, between those two, the price point is such that I would go with the quad core because there is a substantial uh, speed boost, uh, especially when you're doing a lot of uh, encoding or multitasking that, that is requiring a lot of processor power that quad core is going to give you a substantial amount more power and the price difference is not substantial enough to make it worth going with the dual core. Uh, wants to go with a thermal take power supply, definitely make sure it's something that is uh, going to be powerful enough that if you do expand down the road you don't have to replace your power supply. Uh, I always recommend, I've got the uh, cable management, I don't know if you can see it behind my head here, this is the cable management 850 watt thermal take tough power. Uh, pure power is their lower end line, uh, and the tough power is like the really you know higher grade, uh, better power supplies. So they usually have uh, multiple rails and things like that. So that's a good thing to look for is the tough power series. Uh, start no less, I would say, because you want to get into some gaming. You're going to have some nice graphics. Uh, at least you know I would go with the 850 watt. I wouldn't go any less than 650 watt. Uh, so if you're looking at a 430 or something, I would stay away from that. It's not going to be powerful enough for you. NVIDIA graphics is a good idea, especially because you're going to be using Linux. That's going to help you uh, get your uh, your 3D effects and things going. Make sure it's something. Um, it, it's kind of it's weird the way that they number the graphics cards for NVIDIA. It's very confusing because you think that uh, let's say an 80 an 8200 would be way better than a 7600 because the 7600 is such a substantially lower number. Right. But it's it's not necessarily the case. The 7600 may give better performance because oh. it really involves you look at the Nvidia numbers as as two different numbers. So you've got the first number which is the thousand, so 7 8,000, 9,000, like that. Okay. And then the last three numbers is basically the grade of the card within that series. So, so a 7,950 okay. is probably going to perform better than an 8,600 because the 7,950 is the 950 of the 7,000 line. Not the 600 of the 8,000 line. That's right. Okay, yeah. yeah. So the, the 8,600 may have some newer effects and newer, newer things, uh, but you may not need those. So I would compare that way and make sure that you get some benchmark tests test to uh, see what, what it is you want. but uh, So definitely keep the, the last three numbers high. Look for something that is going to be a good price point that's going to have uh, those last three numbers are going to be higher than 600. That's where I would start. Uh, and then from there, your motherboard, make sure that you've got PCI Express. That's very important. Uh, and if you want to expand down the road, uh, it's hard because they, you know, Intel is bringing out these new processors and things, and and you know I, I would stick with the 775 chipset because it's going to be so much uh, cheaper to get started up. You can start with like a quad 6600 processor at the entry level of the quad core processors, and then you can upgrade that. So as you go, you can even get into really really expensive processors down the road. But I would start with maybe a, a quad 6600 775 uh, pin uh, chip. Uh, as your processor and, and then that gives you a good starting point. And the reason I suggest that is because you're looking at, at spending only up to a thousand dollars US. So your processor is going to be a big uh, price changer there. 
Um, Cliff in the chat room has a related question, Robbie. Yep. Cliff wants to know, how do you know if a power supply will fit physically once you order one? Uh, Cliff's thinking of getting a thermal take power supply. Well, essentially you're looking at like ATX, mini ITX, right? So look at, look at the, f like it will actually show the form factor on the, uh, on the website, wherever you're ordering it from or on the box if, if that's the case. Uh, so ATX, ITX, like all these different things are uh, telling you the size of that power supply. Uh, just jumping back to that motherboard uh, for Zach, just I mentioned about going with PCI Express because that's kind of where we want to be uh, with your graphics card. Of course, AGP is kind of a thing of the past and things like that. Uh, so then the next thing is just your RAM. You want to start with something that's going to be uh, half decent. Make sure you go with dual channel. So that means if you're only going to start with two gigs right now, get two sticks of one and put them in the dual mm -hmm. channel socket so that you can get twice the, uh, the front side bus speed. So that's going to increase the speed of your RAM. So then you can add another two and bring it up to four. Or if you want to eventually upgrade to more than that, just keep it in, in, in sets of two and that's going to keep a dual channel for you. So if you have any more questions for me, Zach, uh, do get into the chat room, category5.tv, or just email me back, and I'll be happy to take it even further than that. But uh, hopefully that gives you a good starting point anyways. Uh, but the main keys, because you want to keep the price down, your main keys are going to be your processor, which is upgradable. So start at the base with a quad core 6600, all right? And then that way you can upgrade because that's the entry level. You can work your way up from there in the co in the quad core processors, uh, and then your RAM start with DDR2 667 rather than jumping straight into DDR3 uh, because that's going to still allow you room for for growth uh, in in such a way that it, you know it's not going to be obsolete too soon uh, unless you have you know the extra budget that you can go DDR3. But kind of start with the RAM and the processor on the entry level and work those up down the road. So kind of work towards upgrading your RAM a year from now, th that kind of thing.